New details are emerging from the operation in Rafah, and we will review the fighting that is taking place in this city, which is the beating heart of Hamas. Briefly, the IDF has finished isolating Rafah from the outside world and is slowly destroying the Hamas forces in that city. Let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 256th day of the war with Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, and its terror proxies in Yemen, Iraq, and Syria. The IDF's Division 162 has been fighting in the Gaza Strip for 255 days, 40 of which since the operation in Rafah began. The maneuvering mission in Rafah was carried out under the command of Brigadier General Itzi Cohen, under which the 401st Armored Brigades, the Commando Brigade, the Nachal Brigade, and the Givati Brigade operate. This operation began in the first phase with taking control of the Rafah crossing and the move into the neighborhoods of Barzil. The IDF created operational control and actually carried out a tactical deception exercise, making the enemy think that the maneuver would start in the southern part of the corridor when in fact it began in the northern part. This plan resulted in Hamas deploying large forces in the wrong areas, leaving the routes the IDF used to enter the city less guarded. It also allowed the IDF to quickly take control of the Philadelphia Corridor, capture multiple rocket launching sites before they could fire rockets at Tel Aviv and other cities in Israel, and keep casualties to a minimum. The IDF is today in full operational control between the Kerem Shalom crossing in Israel and the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. This allows Division 162 to prevent maritime smuggling at the Egyptian border and operationally control the neighborhoods of Brazil and NPK, the Philadelphia Corridor, Savora, and the area between Philadelphia and Tel Sultan neighborhood where a combat team from the 401st Brigade operates. As of today, out of four Hamas battalions in Rafah, two are on the verge of being defeated and two more are still fighting. That's why it's important that you take an active role in supporting us and share the truth with anyone who wants to know what is happening in Israel. Please click the follower button and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that together we can share the truth as far as possible. To continue, in the course of the operations in Rafah, the IDF has discovered and taken control of 25 tunnels that reach from Rafah to the Egyptian border and another 200 tunnel shafts within the city of Rafah. In addition, the estimate is that at least 550 terrorists have been eliminated and the number could be much higher. Also, the IDF has been able to prevent Hamas from capturing traffic routes and using dozens of launch pads aimed at the center of Israel in the south. However, the political echelon's delay in allowing the IDF to move towards Rafah resulted in the terrorists having to prepare for the arrival of IDF forces. It must also be said that the terrorists in Rafah had observed the IDF tactics, weapons, and equipment in previous battles that were fought in the Gaza area. This is in Khan Yunus, Gaza City, and other cities further north. This gave them many advantages and helped them make preparations for fighting the IDF in Rafah. For the first time in this campaign, the soldiers encountered entire neighborhoods whose homes had been captured as well as one of the most advanced tunnel systems of Hamas in Gaza. This has seen some of the most difficult fighting the IDF has encountered and so far, 22 IDF soldiers have been killed in action in Rafah. However, Progress is being made and in the last 24 hours, the NBK neighborhood, which contains the headquarters of the Gaza Brigade, was secured. This was home to some of the most dedicated members of Hamas, the real hardcore of the organization. Furthermore, as of Monday evening, the IDF has full control over 70% of the area of the city of Rafah and its surroundings. The battle in Rafah began 40 days ago and the IDF estimates that it will continue for several more days to a few weeks. In recent hours, the IDF has been conducting battles against what remains of the two Hamas battalions in the city. The battles are taking place in the Tel Sultan neighborhood and in the east of the Savora neighborhood. 
The IDF says that they are prepared for any decision of the political echelon regarding the Philadelphia Corridor the day after. This might mean remaining in full control of the area, retaining strategic points but leaving others, or making a full withdrawal and relying on periodic raids to deal with threats as they emerge. The IDF has also praised the coordination with the Egyptians that was maintained at all times, preventing the departure of Gazans or Hamas terrorists to the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. The IDF also says that the smuggling tunnels that ran underneath the Egyptian border are inspected and researched before they are destroyed. This process has resulted in the destruction of most of the assets of the Rafah Brigade, including the tunnel system, the command arrays, the enormous stockpiles of weapons and ammunition, and most of the command and control infrastructure. This campaign was planned in stages and carried out according to very strict guidelines. At every stage, IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Herzi Alevi was kept informed and took a personal interest in the progress of the fighting. He and the other members of the IDF leadership have rejected the claim that the IDF is faltering in the fighting in Rafah, saying that everything necessary to achieve victory is in place and only a little more time is required. With that in mind, I will ask you to once again, please continue to spread the truth with us by subscribing to this YouTube channel and sharing our videos on social media. If you would like to receive additional videos like this one from Israel and from this region, please consider making a financial donation by clicking the donate button on YouTube or by going to our website at www.tbn.org slash Israel. Switching our focus now to the northern border, where Israel is under heavy fire from the Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah. In addition to thousands of rockets, more than 150 UAVs were intercepted by the air defense units of the IDF since the beginning of the war. However, many managed to get through the defenses and hit their target, causing heavy damage and some casualties. However, the IDF has also learned many lessons from all this activity and now the security establishment estimates that within three months a better technological operational solution for interception will be found. The Ministry of Defense allocated hundreds of millions of shekels for the development of a solution and even gave the defense industries in Israel an open check. The main improvement is expected to come from Iron Dome which is already operated in the area and improvements have been introduced that will enable additional detection capabilities to identify suspicious aerial targets in the Israeli skies. In addition to this, older technologies such as the Vulcan cannon, which was used as an anti-aircraft weapon, are being re-examined to see if they can be upgraded to deal with the threat of UAVs programmed to fly at low altitudes and speed, often launched from hidden valleys and at a short range in a way that makes them very hard to detect. These new solutions are necessary not only because of the innovations made by Hezbollah in the weapons they use against us, but also the Iron Dome anti-rocket defense system is very expensive and so more cost-efficient ways to bring down incoming drones and rockets are being developed. This is especially urgent in light of the intelligence estimates that Hezbollah has several thousand UAVs. Their ability to launch them in large numbers together with rockets, which the defense system will also help to keep track of, means that even if the rate of interceptions increases, there will be no hermetic seal of Israeli airspace. Weapons will get through, and plans must be made for this as well. In a related story, on Monday, the Ministry of Defense reported that for the third year now in a row, 2023 saw a new record in the value of defense exports of the State of Israel, totaling 13.1 billion US dollars. Most of these exports are related to air defense and include radar systems, interceptors, and the computers that make these systems work together as well as components for military aircraft and ground vehicles. In the last five years, the volume of Israeli defense experts has doubled, fueled in part by growing interest in Israeli equipment by European countries concerned about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 
everyone knows that there is a war going on between good and evil and no one wants to be unable to defend against aggression. Despite the popularity of Israel's defense industry, this country is endlessly targeted by lies and propaganda which seek to turn people against the people of Israel. Therefore, today more than ever it is important to support the truth. So please share and follow us and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It is very important that you take an active part in spreading the truth. Speaking of Israel's defense industry, it has been reported in foreign media reports that Israel has an arsenal of nuclear weapons although the government has always maintained a policy of ambiguity, neither confirming or denying that it has the bomb. Nevertheless, Iran, which denies that it is seeking nuclear weapons, must take this possibility into account. Also most of Israel's friends and allies, and also countries that are somewhere in between. To help everyone with this, allow me to explain what is reported about this issue in foreign media sources. According to these reports in foreign media portals, intelligence agencies estimate that Israel has between 90 and 300 nuclear warheads. The warheads are believed to be stored separately from the delivery platforms, which include Jericho ballistic missiles stored in underground silos as well as smaller cruise missiles and bombs designed to be launched from F-16 and F-15 aircrafts. According to some reports, the most recent upgrade of ballistic missiles, the Jericho 3, has a range of 4,000 kilometers. Finally, according to foreign sources, it is believed that Israel's fleet of five German-built Dolphin-class submarines are armed with cruise missiles that can be fitted with nuclear warheads. This gives Israel a so-called second strike capability, which would allow it to respond to an attack even if the first two parts of the nuclear trade, the ballistic missiles and the aircraft launch weapons, were to be disabled. I hope this clears up the matter for anyone in Iran or anywhere else who isn't sure whether launching an attack on Israel is a wise decision or not. I would ask you to once again help us make sure that the people who need to hear this message get an opportunity to do so by sharing this video far and wide. It's very important that you help us share the truth but it's even more important that you pray with us for the peace of Israel and the peace of the IDF soldiers, for the citizens, the civilians that are affected by this conflict on both sides because of these terrorist organizations. And most importantly, join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. And together, we will win this war. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.